Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa today issued Decree Number Two of 2021, amending some provisions of Decree Number Eleven of 2014 on the formation and organization of the National Space Sciences Agency (NSSA). Article One replaces Paragraph One of Decree Number Eleven 2014 by the following: There shall be formed an agency cited as the National Space Sciences Agency, reporting to the Supreme Defense Council. Article Two replaces the phrase Supreme Defense Council with Council of Ministers and the phrase Secretary General of the Supreme Defense Council with the word Minister whenever they appear in Decree Number 11 2014. Article 3 counsels the definition of Minister contained in Article 1 of Decree 11 2014. The last paragraph of Clause 2 of Article 10 of the same decree shall also be cancelled. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq Al Saeed of Oman, marking the anniversary of his accession to the throne. His Majesty the King expressed heartfelt congratulations on the occasion, wishing His Majesty Sultan Haytham continued good health and further growth and prosperity to Oman under his wise leadership. His Majesty lauded strong fraternal relations between both countries and peoples and their perpetual growth in various fields. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq of Oman, marking the anniversary of his accession to the throne. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister expressed the heartfelt congratulations on the occasion, wishing His Majesty continued good health and Oman further growth and prosperity under his wise leadership. His Royal Highness highlighted the strong bilateral relations between both countries and their people and their perpetual growth in various various fields. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister today chaired the weekly cabinet meeting held remotely. The cabinet congratulated Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defence, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on the success of the 41st Gulf Cooperation Council summit meeting recently hosted by the Kingdom. The cabinet commended the role played by Saudi Arabia in developing joint Gulf action and promoting Gulf development, security and stability. The cabinet also congratulated Saudi Arabia on the launch of the LINE project in NEOM, which embodies the rapid development steps witnessed under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. The cabinet stressed the importance of Bahrain International Airport expansion project in reinforcing Bahrain's position as a primary center for logistics services and a regional travel hub. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince directed work to continue towards beginning operations on the 28th of January, taking time to thank all relevant authorities and personnel involved in the significant project. On the occasion of the 24th anniversary of the establishment of the National Guard, the Cabinet praised the National Guard as a key component of the Kingdom's armed forces and acknowledged its competence, readiness and dedication to service. On the occasion of Bahraini Diplomacy Day on the 14th of January, the Cabinet praised the accomplishments of the Kingdom's diplomatic corps in enhancing Bahrain's regional and international standings and relations through a balanced approach to foreign policy. The Cabinet then followed up on the measures taken by the Ministry of Interior to assess damages suffered by Bahraini seafarers affected by the actions taken by the Qatari authorities in order to compensate them. The Cabinet stressed that the security and safety of Bahraini citizens is a top priority and any violations against them are rejected. The Cabinet directed the Ministry of Interior to undertake all necessary processes towards releasing all citizens detained by Qatar. The Cabinet offered its condolences to the government and people of Indonesia and to the families of the victims of the fatal passenger airplane crash and expressed the Kingdom's sympathy towards all affected by this tragic accident. A number of memorandums were discussed during the meeting. The Cabinet approved the following memorandums. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a series of decisions aimed at strengthening Bahrain's commercial environment, including regulation of online selling for foreign companies and regulation of e-commerce shops and auction sites.
A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on registration and safety conditions and procedures to obtain a navigation license for small vessels transporting less than 150 tons of cargo. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding strengthening the governance of procedures for accepting grants by ministries and government entities. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the transformation of the company Export Bahrain to a closed joint stock company fully owned by the state as part of the government's drive to increase Bahraini exports and pursue more international opportunities and export solutions for Bahraini commercial establishments. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding a memorandum of understanding between Bahrain and the United States on increasing trade through several initiatives that promote Bahrain as a preference for U.S. companies in the areas of business, distribution and services, in addition to the expansion of facilities located in Salman Industrial City designated for bilateral trade with the United States. A memorandum from the Minister of Interior regarding amending some provisions of the passport law which provide the Minister of Interior with the authority to issue decisions regarding determining places of entry and exit from the Kingdom and determining the personal documents approved for this in order to facilitate the movement of travellers. A memorandum from the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments regarding the organization of the Sunni and Jafari Endowments Councils. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs regarding the government's response to two proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. Secondly, the Cabinet reviewed the following topics. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the Committee's work in the year 2020. A memorandum from the Minister of Interior regarding the amendment of the Procedures Manual for Selling Special Registration Numbers and the amendment of two ministerial decisions related to traffic law. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the Ambassador of the People's Republic of China to the Kingdom of Bahrain and Wair at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the growing ties between Bahrain and China and emphasized the importance of strengthening cooperation across areas that will serve the interests of both nations and their people. He praised the progress that Bahraini Chinese relations are enjoying across various fields and expressed his appreciation for the working partnership developed by Bahrain and China to confront the COVID-19 pandemic. His Royal Highness and the Chinese ambassador then reviewed regional and international developments of mutual concern. For his part, the ambassador Anwar expressed his appreciation to His Royal Highness for his continuing support towards increasing bilateral cooperation. The Civil Aviation Affairs, the CAA at the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications has announced that Bahrain's airspace remains open for Qatar registered aircraft in accordance with established procedures. The relevant notices have been amended regarding Qatar registered aircraft commencing today at 1 GMT. Bahrain Defense Force BDF has announced that it has started the first phase in volunteering registration for civilians to join the reserve force for relatives of workers and retirees in BDF and the National Guard, the military and civilians. In the first stage, registration will only be for male citizens whose relatives are members of the BDF or the National Guard. In the second stage, registration will be open for male and female of the community. The reserve force law promulgated in 1987 has regulated all rights and duties of the reserve force as an auxiliary force for the BDF as well as the benefits and entitlements. The BDF added that the applicants should fill in the form available on the website shown on the screen.
The latest COVID-19 developments and precautionary measures aimed at mitigating the spread of the virus continue to be discussed at the periodical meetings held by the National Medical Task Force to Combat COVID-19, headed by the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. The National Medical Task Force emphasized the importance of continuing to adhere to all precautionary measures in order to ensure the safety of all. The task force noted that social responsibility and a commitment to following all health measures will contribute to supporting national efforts to mitigate the spread of the virus. Based on a review of COVID-19 statistics and data and procedures related to travelers entering the Kingdom of Bahrain via the King Fahad Causeway, a recommendation was raised by the task force and approved by the government executive committee requiring travelers entering through the causeway to conduct a PCR test up to 72 hours before arrival into the Kingdom of Bahrain starting Sunday, the 7th of January 2021. The negative PCR test result required can be provided on any official COVID-19 phone application such as the Be Aware app, Tataman Sahati and El Hassan as well as others. Travelers can also provide a printed negative PCR certificate containing a QR code. COVID-19 PCR testing services at the King Fahad Causeway for all travelers entering the Kingdom of Bahrain will no longer be available. The decision aims to facilitate entry into the Kingdom from an important point of entry whilst continuing to observe precautionary measures. After the rest day in Ha'il Bahrain, Raid Extreme drivers Sebastian Loeb and Nani Roma has the first part of the marathon stage in front of them for stage 7 of this year's Dakar Rally. Leaving at Ha'il Loeb and Roma had 737 kilometers of driving, 284 kilometers of road and 453 kilometers of special stage making their way to Sakaka. The rest of the Bahrain Raid Extreme team headed to Neom, where the drivers would reconvene with them ahead of the stage 8. The Spaniard is currently 5th overall, 1 minute 59 seconds behind the leader. Sebastian Loeb bounced back after a challenging day during stage 6. However, 30 kilometers from the finish, a mechanical issue, mechanical issue forced Loeb and co-driver Daniel Elena to stop to make repairs causing the pair time. This leaves Loeb in 41st. The second half of the marathon stage takes takes the drivers from Sakaka to Neom, covering 709 km with 344 km of road and 375 km of special stage driving. It's important to arrive here with the, with the car with the good, in the good conditions. Well, we try to, to drive well, not make mistakes. We had one puncture and after, anyway, it's okay. It's a positive day to be here in the marathon stage. The car, ah, it's okay. We need now to to repair, so, not repair, but to check something. But uh, the rest is okay. Yeah, for for our our strategy, it's uh, try to every day learning, make kilometers. We are in the good position in the overall. This means that for me, continue like that. You know, we try to learn the car, to understand the car, and yeah, this is our strategy to the, to the end. Eh? Every day. Try not to stop in the stage, start and finish well every day, and, and that's it. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 2,840, with 249 recoveries, 241 registered new cases, and one death. 125 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 105 are contact of active cases, and 11 are travel-related. The deceased was a 74-year-old female citizen. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased. It has also warned against the dangers of leniency in applying precautionary measures to mitigate the spread of the virus and underestimation of its danger. It stated that such underestimation causes a rise in the number of active coronavirus cases greater than previous figures. The Ministry of Health underscored the importance of decreasing the percentage of active cases through individual and communal commitment to the regulations issued by the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus and other relative authorities.